Welcome back to Daytona International Speedway. Let's set the starting grid for you as we go down through the field. The green flag flies, and the bikes that are in this field, 30 of them in all, head for turn number one. Great sound from the big heart as they thunder off 883cc displacement. Terrific sound on, through the racing exhaust systems. This is basically a super sport type of a class. Limited modifications, but that, that doesn't mean anything. The racing is fantastic. Every Harley fan here at Daytona for Bike Week is here today and looked like Sean Higby went underneath Eric Bostrom there and has gotten back into the lead. Bostrom got a nice start, ran a little wide into the horseshoe, let Higby on through. Higby and Bostrom squared off at Phoenix during the first Super Twins AMA National of 1997, and it was fun to watch back and forth. The young Bostrom, that's Eric Bostrom, not Ben Bostrom, he is coming up and filling his brother's rather large boots. Hey, in fact, he's checking over his left shoulder, seeing what the distance is back to third. You know, you talk about Sean Higby, and he is running out front. He is tied right now with victories with Trip Nobles. They each have nine Super Twin wins in the career, but they are in second place. The man who holds the all-time record has made a living off of these machines, Scott Zampak, with 25, and he is not here. We'll be talking quite a bit about the Z-Man as we watch this race. Sean Higby leads out on the banking for the first time. Eric Bostrom tucked in behind him. Bostrom stands about three or four inches smaller than Sean Higby, and that will make a difference because you'll notice these machines run with just a front number plate. There we see Eric Bostrom using the draft to get by Sean Higby going into the chicane for the first time, flicking that Harley-Davidson around like it was a mini bike. Well, Bostrom last year finished sixth in the Super Twins, and... Uh, by season's end, here comes another potential pass back. And you mentioned it right from the get-go, with these being identical horsepower bikes for the most part, you really have to know how to ride or you're not going to get to the front. It's all about late braking, manic cornering speeds, unbelievable lean angles. Wait till you see these guys leading these Harley-Davidson's over. This is the Sportster series of Harley-Davidson. This is their sport bike, 883 cc's, five-speed transmission. It's a push rod motor, but you wouldn't know it from watching this racing. The, the motors may be a little bit less technical than the Japanese fours we watched in the Superbike race, but you wouldn't know it from watching them run around here. Yes, we hope you were with us when we had the uh, Superbike race, the Daytona 200 by Arrive live. In fact, these guys were racing oh. actually right after the race, and the people in the stands, when you get a... It is just incredible how many of these people have stuck around. You saw Bostrom get a little bit wide in turn one, and that makes a difference four or five corners down. They, he got a little wide in turn one, and that threw him off for the kink, the high-speed kink before the International Horseshoe, and Higby took advantage of it and stuck it back up under him uh, for the lead in the, in, in the infield. The Seagulls are finding out racing for the day is not over yet. They are departing the area. You can see back in the pack there, that is the number 98 of Jake Zemke. He gets around for another position. Right behind him is uh, Perry M Melnichik. And That's Mel Perry Melnichik, exactly. Melnichik had a fall earlier in practice uh, that, uh, I mean, he was hurt for a while. That's exactly right. Melnichik is a 250 Grand Prix pilot uh, on the Honda 250 along with John France, a very good, a very well turned out team in 250 Grand Prix. And Melnichik is spreading his wings and trying some different classes. We see that happen now with quite a few racers. Of course, Rich Oliver doing a couple different classes. Uh, Tom Kipp, Miguel Duhamel, Steve Crevier on down the line. I think it helps. You get out there, run a bunch of classes, get used to the racetrack, go pretty good. Drafting for the lead again, and we've got another pass, and again, it's gonna be Mr. Bostrom, Eric, moving in front of Sean. I'll tell you what, Marty, I'm not surprised to see these two out by themselves. Sean Higby, bike number three, look at the lean angle he's putting in that thing. He qualified at a 212.6, two minute, 12 second, point six lap, and right behind Eric Bostrom at a 213.8. So you can see these two were the quickest because the next guy back is almost two seconds a lap slower during qualifying. And Sean Higby dives right underneath to retake the lead. You know, these bikes don't have fairings like we've seen in the other divisions through Bike Week. How much does that affect the draft? Quite a bit, actually. You're going to push a, a, a larger surface of air. That air is being slammed open and then slammed shut behind you because the fairings and the tail sections are much smaller. Look at this. Fantastic. This is Super Twins action. It's best at Daytona. Three abreast, side by side through the banking. They're flat out. Uh, this is the race to get into the top 10, 10th, 11th, and 12th. As number 65 comes around, the whole group of them, that's uh, Jason Fletcher doing a great job of using that three-bike draft. Frank Stroman has the position, but I don't know who's going to have it by the time we get through one. Something's got to give. 
Who's going to break the best? They run it deep down into one. You take a nice wide line in one to get a good drive out. And of course, if you go too wide, somebody's going to go underneath you. There is no quarter given in, in AMA National Racing. Meanwhile, back up front, these two keep swapping the position, and it has turned in, at least for the battle up front, between these two, and they have opened up a sizable mark. You can see third place nowhere in sight right now. Looks like about a seven-second lead uh, between second and third place. Sean Higby and Eric Frost from the class of this field. We'll talk a little bit about the Harley-Davidson the, that they're racing. They're certainly not production standard equipment, but they're quite close. This is the battle for third on the left side of the screen. The number 12 of David Eastock and right alongside him, the number 98 of Jake Zemke. Eastock, of course, the uh, teammate to Sean Higby. He's riding a Rick O. Oh, it looks like Zemke almost lost to getting out on the banking, had both wheels sliding. That made, no, Zemke got through. Hard to tell who that was. I think it was Zemke that lost it getting out on the banking, gathered it back up, and kept it going, but he lost a couple spots. Back to the battle up front. It's another pass for the lead. These guys keep swapping it every, oh, turn or two. And right now it looks like Sean Higby is back out in front. The cost to run this series is really affordable, though, too. This is basically the lowest rung in AMA National Series racing. This is where they want to bring in the kids, bring in the teams that want to get up into super sport and maybe super bike 250 Grand Prix and, and Formula Extreme Racing, which are the professional series in AMA. Bring them into this class, get them started, get the kids up and running. Got to remember, these guys are not on race slicks, too. That can make it a little treacherous. And uh, look at this battle. This is the race for third as it comes down. Melanchik holding his own despite some injuries he, he gained earlier in practice. Number 12, of course, Eastock and Zemke right there. This is going to be a good battle. They're going to have to put together some clean laps if they want to keep the first and second inside. Melanchik with his hand behind him, just like a figure skater. That's aerodynamics, trying to be as clean as he can through the air. Uh, didn't quite work as Eastock sneaks by. And he's going to be the uh, third member of the group heading down into turn number one. So obviously that didn't help at all. Didn't seem to help at all. A lot of the guys will take their left hand off the hand grip and put it down on the fork leg, just like we see the dirt trackers do. Look at the lean angles these things run. These guys are running street-based tires, DOT treaded tires, and doing a fantastic job of, of hustling these big Harleys to the corners. And Lance Jones has joined the fray, the number 28. So this is third, fourth, fifth, and sixth, all battling it out together. You know, and I guess, why wouldn't they just hook up, stay in line, and try and catch back up to the guys up front? That may be a little too tough of a job. They probably know exactly where they qualified and knew that Higby had gone 212, and they, they hadn't even been within three or four seconds of him. So, uh, terrific racing. Zemke keeps pushing Eastock, and, that, and that's what we like to see in this class. A lot of dirt trackers try their hand at road racing first in the Harley-Davidson Super Twins Series. It's a class that has, has, has brought out some incredible talent and brought them up to the fore, and it's certainly among them, Ben Bostrom, who now is uh, someone oh. down. A rider down. Perry, is that That's Perry, Perry. Melnichick? Perry Melnichick throws the Harley Davidson down in turn five. He had gotten a little bit loose there earlier. They're always sliding these tires around. It's stuck in gear. Looks like the handlebars are bent. Something's broken down. That's his clutch lever broken down there. He's done. All right, let's take another look at it as uh, he's okay. The bike is uh, going to have to go back for repairs. Let's take another look. Perry Melnichick, third in line right there. We're looking at him. Yeah, lost the back end. Couldn't quite save it gets flicked off, not quite a high side. He almost saved it, almost brought it back. These Harley Davidsons with a little more wheelbase, they sometimes slide pretty nice. He tumbles, gets back up thanks to very good leathers and equipment. Runs over and sees if his bike's okay, but no, no clutch lever. Lance Jones did a great job in avoiding the accident. There you see Perry, he's uh, limping off, but at least he is up. And they are still working on trying to get the bike. It's probably stuck in gear, I would imagine, with no clutch. It's gonna be a little hard to push. Hang in there, Perry. Uh, you've had a tough weekend, but Daytona's like that. Back to the battle up front. We have just completed lap number four of seven. There are three remaining. Oh, Higby puts a move on him, goes around the outside. Fantastic stuff. All right, the battle's going to continue here. We'll be back with more of the action from Daytona International Speedway. Stay with us. The battle for the lead in the Harley-Davidson Super Twins, and it is Sean Higby in front of Eric Bostrom. They are the only two that are in this battle, and it is a long way back to third, but there's a great battle going on back there as well. Looks like Eric's lost a little bit of ground here. 
Look at the lean angle Higby is carrying. Higby comes off of a, of a, a pretty good year with a Ferracci Ducati Superbike team. He may not have been ready for that. The year before that, he was with Dutchman Racing, did a great job in super teams competition, riding uh, Dutchman Racing's very fast YZF 1000. And now he's into the super twins, making a name for himself, proving that he can run up front uh, and, and ride a machine to its, to its limits. Right now, he needs to catch up to the draft because Sean Higby is in a position where if it doesn't happen, by the end of this straightaway, he'll be out of contact and there will be no draft left for Bostrom to hook on to. Higby throws a pretty big draft. He's a, he's a pretty big guy for this. And sure enough, there comes Eric Bostrom. Eric Bostrom sliding by against the wall, going down into the chicane. Hard braking on these five-speed bikes from fifth gear down two gears to third. Flick it in hard left, right back down on the fuel tank for the short run through the chicane, right through the bumps right there, some pretty good bumps right there, back out on the bank and blast up as high, close to the wall as you'd like. Eric Bostrom takes a look around behind him at his buddy Sean Higby. Uh, Sean says, Eric, you're not going anywhere. Eric, don't look behind you. They may be gaining. <laughs> exactly. I think both these guys were lucky that the Z-Man, Scott Zampak, isn't here. The Z-Man set the lap record here at Daytona at about a 2.11, a second quicker than, than these two have ever gone. And Scott Zampak had a bad injury at Loudoun last year while racing a motorcycle. And we hope you're watching today, Scott, and we wish you were here. I think if you were here, you would be leading this pack because you are the Super Twins champ and probably will be forever down into turn one side by side uh oh it's getting a little dirty out there remember these guys are racing right after the daytona 200 if you get out in that marbly area where there's a lot of dust and and uh, tire left over you could be in some quick trouble let's take a look back at this battle for third which you've got to love zemke uh zemke ahead of uh, david Eastock right there and this is this is super twins racing right here mixing it up with them of course uh, Lance Jones has snuck up in there. He's the number 28 bike we hadn't seen too much of, but he had snuck up in there and grabbed a draft on these two guys and said, uh, he told me along, let me run with you boys and uh, put things together. Now Lance doing a fine job. Once he caught these guys up, he has stayed right with them. This is the battle for the last uh, step on the podium, uh, third place. That's a pretty big deal to motorcycle road racers. If you go to a race and you don't uh, get on the box, as they say, first, second, or third, you've pretty much felt you've wasted your time. And, of course, that's where the money is, too. You do well up there. Look at the lean angles these guys are carrying. These are lightly prepared, 883. Look at Eastock running that thing hard. He's a dirt tracker, and you can tell he doesn't mind sliding it. Lightly prepared machines. They lever on a, second, a set of sticky tires, lower handlebars. They change the exhaust system. They do a little... Uh, carburetor jetting and one of the most important things that Rick Hutchins told me is is uh, doing the valve job correctly getting the right valve angles that really makes them run the battle continues up front in super twins in fact it's all over the racetrack stay with us we'll be right back and these guys are passing the lead back and forth and we are on lap number six just that quickly oh. and we are going to be seeing the white flag this time by Eric Bostrom pulled out a little bit of a gap, and, and he may have a chance of running to the to the stripe now out of the chicane. He's got about, I'd say, eight bike lengths on Higby, and because he's a little bit smaller, he's out of the wind a little bit better. Higby with his hand tucked up, and oh, Higby gra grabbed a hold of the draft. What is happening here is the 20 bike is breaking in the air. Higby is being sucked along with him. He can use less horsepower to go as fast, meaning that hopefully he can slingshot on by. All right, now, Higby doesn't look to be pressing it right here. Could he be sort of trying to snooker him into this? Does, you know, did he know that last time by? Well, so much for that theory. He's going to try and take it down low. And at the line, it would have been Mr. Higby, but we've got one more lap to go. Exact mundo, Marty. And I'll tell you what, a Daytona lore, the place to be is second on the last lap. So we'll see who is thinking out there and who is just flat out going as hard as they can. Ben Bostrom, Eric's older brother, moved from a very, very strong Super Twins career onto the Zero Gravity team where he got a 600 ride and even an RC45 Superbike to use during a couple nationals here in the 97 season. So it's important that these guys do well, don't throw it on the ground, finish races, and if you can do it, win them. And I think Higby fell right back into line. And your theory, he wants to be second. That was a test run. He knows when he has to make his move because he has not made any attempts to try and dive underneath through any of the hairpins, the horseshoes, anywhere else. And our last real sharp corner before we go up on the high banks again is coming up at turn five. Boy, they never really come out of their tucks on these machines, do they? Uh, anytime you're sitting up, you're becoming air brake and the aerodynamics quit working. There they sat up on the brakes. 
Eric Bostrom leads out of the banking. They've got a run of banking about a mile, a little over a mile long. Then they're going to break hard for the chicane. The chicane is very important. We'll see who gets in there first. It may be a battle of the slowest bike. They may both slow down and say, after you, sir. Well, but if that did happen, would Higby take the slingshot and just go with it right now? Yeah, he is just tucking in. This is a setup, folks. This is like, could be. Do you feel like maybe if you're Eric right there on front, that you're just a chicken about to be plugged? <laughs> like you have been had. I don't know, but certainly Higby didn't even come offline on the brakes. He didn't even try to take a look under. Let's see what Bostrom does now. Eric Bostrom, he, he's going to go for it through the chicane. He's hard on the throttle. He flicks the thing in right. He's back in the throttle as hard as he can go. He's pulled maybe seven or eight bike lengths. Higby goes up a little too oh. high. He almost clips the tires. Higby almost clipped the tire and threw the thing away at one of the fastest parts in the, in the racetrack. It was almost all over. And like you said, he slowed down so slowly, but is it going to be enough? Because here comes Higby, got the tuck down. Here we head out of turn four at NASCAR. And Lowell trying to weave down onto the pavement. That's normally pit lane. I love that move. Eric Bostrom stays down on the flat, but Higby goes around the outside. Eric Bostrom leading to the line, and it works for him. Eric Bostrom uses the pit road to put the thing across. I have not seen that move before, Marty. Eric Bostrom had a trick up his sleeve, and he pulled it on Sean Higby. The question is, and here comes Lance Jones for third. Is that a legal move? I wonder. I think it is. Anything that's paved, you might as well use it. I mean, that is so far off the race line. Boy, we're going to have to find out. We'll sort it out for you. So far, that is your winner, and we're going to talk to him when we come back. Back at Daytona International Speedway, where we have seen both great strategy and some very, very, shall we say, courageous moves. Victory Lane is where we're headed. Art Ekman is there with our winner. Eric, what great strategy in that final lap. Why do you take us through it? Uh, were you thinking about it uh, before that lap started? Yes, I was. I was thinking about the whole race. I was kind of testing Sean out, and it seemed like I had a little motor on him. My Miller Electric Harley was just running great. Got got off to a great start. Sean really ran a great race. You know, he turned up the heat, and we ran, a, it seemed like, good lap times the whole race. And on the last lap, I kind of wanted to let Sean go through this can. I broke kind of early, hoping he'd go by, but he didn't take the bait. So then I just... Uh, just you know had to wing it and kind of hung up by the wall and then cut down low and onto the apron and it worked out for me Boy, you really hammered it yeah just uh 100 percent let it all hang out eric great mind great mind games in this race congratulations thanks a lot okay let's go back to marty and nick okay thanks art as we take a look at the final results uh, final comments from you nick that's what Eric Bostrom has to do, put it the hammer down and let it hang out. Sean Higby and he did a great job. Uh, Jones did a great job as well. That's what you need to do to get to move up the ladder and get a factory ride. For Nick Einach and Art Ekman, I'm Marty Reed. Thanks so much for watching. It's time for us to head on out of here. Bike Week 97 has been wonderful. We hope you've enjoyed it as well. Celebration continues in Victory Lane. We say so long as this is an ESPN2 production, the worldwide leader in motorsports.